It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. I'm gonna respond to a video and separate TikTok parts talking about the video that was done by Redeem Zoomer. He allegedly answered many atheist argumentation in 10 minutes, so without further hesitation, let's begin. The story of Jesus was copied from the story of Horus or some other ancient character. Okay, dude, that's a Reddit atheist level myth. Even atheist scholars know that that's silly. The idea that the gospel have direct outside influence from other cultures is not necessarily a Reddit idea in the slightest. There's actually an academic book that's called Miracles and Greco-Roman Antiquity that goes into great details about the similarities in the miracles of Jesus Christ versus the Greek gods. For example, for the case of Eclipius, we know that he has the ability to rise people directly from the dead. Jesus Christ had the ability to calm the storms, but that idea is not necessarily original either. Pause the screen right here. In the Gospels, Jesus Christ allegedly said that people will have snakes directly in their hands, while that idea seemed to come from the idea from Penley the Elder. This idea that saliva can also heal people, again, comes directly from Penley the Elder. Hercules had the ability to heal people. So did Eclipius for that matter. According to book number 5 of the Odyssey, Hermes had the ability to walk on the waters. Orion had the ability to walk on water too. For the idea in the story of the empty tomb, you can find similar examples for the Satyricon. When people bring up the fact that these other stories that predate the Gospels actually exist, they're trying to say not necessarily that Jesus the person did not necessarily exist. What they're trying to say is that the writers are using pre-existing motifs to actually influence the stories that they wrote down for their Gospels. When you begin to accept the notion that ideas don't necessarily exist in a vacuum, it's easy to find out how exactly these ideas came about. Sure, the story of Jesus Christ, as presented in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are not necessarily copies directly from Horus, but you cannot simply dismiss the idea of comparative mythology and how exactly mythology influenced other mythology. Atheists have a lot of arguments, but they never really think of anything new that the church hasn't had answers to for the past 2,000 years. The main reason why atheist argumentation have not changed is because theist argumentations haven't changed. Remember that atheism is actually a response to the claims of theism, and so if the theist claims haven't changed for thousands of years, neither would the atheist response to those claims. A lot of evil has been done in the name of religion. This is true, but the most murderous people in human history have been atheists. This doesn't mean religion is true, it just means you can't use that as an argument against it. The idea that Hitler was an atheist is not necessarily founded. Here's a quotation that comes directly from Mein Kampf as well as a speech that was done on March 19, 1934, where he addressed the Nazi parties. Also, according to Hitler's religion, it says right here that every time he discussed atheism overtly, both publicly and privately, he rejected it, associated with the Marxist Socialist Democrats or the Communist Party. Additionally, the Nazi Party openly associated with the Catholic Church. They had belt buckles that said, God with us. So it's quite clear that Hitler did in fact believe in a creator, but he was not really a Christian, he was not necessarily an atheist in this point of his career. Religion causes wars. Well actually only 7% of all human wars were caused by religion, and if you remove Islamic wars that number drops down to 3%. I don't think the argumentation is that all wars are caused directly by religion, but rather, there's religious factors on why exactly some wars have been started. With the whole entire situation that's going on with Israel and Palestine, there's no doubt in my mind, according to the doctrine that I have read directly from Hamas, that they're largely influenced by Islamic ideology. Many people throughout ages have fought holy wars without a shadow of a doubt. As far as the percentage goes, it's really hard to say how much is caused by religion or not, but the reality is that some wars are in fact influenced by some religions. If you were born somewhere else, you wouldn't be a Christian. Okay, and if you were born somewhere else, you wouldn't be an atheist. Everyone's beliefs are shaped by their context. I don't think necessarily in the case of the American context, that's not necessarily true in the slightest that if you grow up in America, you'd be an atheist here. 
According to data that's been done by Gallup in 2022, it seems though that the vast majority of the population identify as Christian, while of course a large minority of the population are not religious. To be an atheist in American society is actually to be against the norm. World. There's no scientific proof that God exists. Well, by definition, science can only prove things inside the natural world, and by definition, God is something outside the natural world. So science can neither prove nor disprove God. This right here is just simply an assertion. He simply wants us to believe that there's actually a dimension that exists outside of nature. But what exactly does outside of nature even mean? Historically speaking, back in the past, our ancient ancestors thought that many things were caused by supernatural forces, but much later on in life, we realized that basically there are natural processes behind them. Why do we have sunrise and sunsets? Well, it's because of the sun god. Why do tides go in and tides go out? It's because of the water god. Why do we have volcano eruptions? Well, it's because of the volcano gods. So the more that science fill in the blank for questions that we actually have, the less we actually need a supernatural explanation. How do you know which religion is true? Well, everyone, religious or not, has faith in a certain worldview. It's just that some worldviews are called religions and some are secular. But everyone has to ask the question of which worldview best explains the world. One way to actually know if a belief system is actually objective and true is using logic, does the whole entire belief system have some sort of logical sense behind it? Another thing that we desperately need also is the ideas of the scientific method, largely because we know for a fact that we discover things and continue to discover things with the scientific method. It's the best way to basically know about objective reality as we know it. Sure, you need philosophy to know about the foundation of morality itself, but for objective truth itself, you need those two things. There's no evidence of anything supernatural. Well, that's just not accurate. There are medically documented cases of people with demonic possessions speaking in languages they don't know, for example, and people with near-death experiences getting information they never had access to. When it comes down to the idea of demon possession, it goes back to my main point about the fact that the more you find something that has natural causes, the less we need supernatural explanations. So-called demon possessions can be caused directly by mental illnesses, as well as hysteria, schizophrenia, as well as epilepsy. Now, when it comes down to the ideas of near-death experience, the main reason why we feel them is largely because of the activity of our brain. Depending upon the culture you actually live in, your brain is going to be affected by the culture surroundings. For example, for a case of a Christian culture, you will have like a near-death experience near Christianity, or for a Hindu culture, or a Buddhist culture, or whatever kind of predominant religion that you live in for that particular region. All of this could be directly explained by the brain, not necessarily something otherworldly. The Bible has contradictions. Okay, you think you found an apparent contradiction that the church hasn't known about for 2,000 years? Every apparent contradiction can be explained by understanding just a little bit of theology. There are historical reasons why exactly the Bible had contradictions. I mean, for all 66 books of the Protestant Bible, or 73 books for the Catholic Bible, every single last writer have different writing styles, and so they're going to have different conflictions for different ideas for this theology. I mean, for the case of academia, there is something that is known as the Documentary Hypothesis, which is, of course, the whole entire series of the Pentateuch, which explains to us what kind of writing styles were used for the first five books of the Bible. The fact that Zoomer said that basically the church actually knew about these contradictions makes me wonder, like if they already knew that the books had contradictions, why is it that they cannot make a new Bible and have a better editing job to make sure that there's no contradictions? Why sell millions of copies of the Bible with those contradictions? The Gospels were anonymous. Okay, anonymous doesn't mean we have no idea who wrote them. It just means the names of the authors aren't signed in the text itself. But we literally have writings from church fathers who knew the apostles and can verify that they indeed wrote the books named after them. That's just simply not true that Ignatius actually knew John. It says right here that there are two letters of Ignatius to John preserved in Latin, but these are universally recognized as forgeries dated back to the Middle Ages. There's no 
incredible evidence that connect Anasius directly with any of the apostles. So your main source seem to be based upon a forgery. The Gospels misquote Jesus. Now it's true that a lot of secular scholars think the Gospels are a mix of real quotes from the historical Jesus and fake quotes added by the church, but none of them can agree on which quotes are legit and which are not, so we can discard their opinions. The thing about the word of Jesus is that we don't necessarily have confirmation either way what we actually know what he said in the past. Largely because there's basically no autobiography directly of the guy, so we have no idea what he said or didn't necessarily say. All that we know about what he said or not say comes directly from the Gospels, and the Gospel writers themselves are not eyewitnesses. It's a game of telephone because basically people are telling people that we're telling people that we're telling people about what Jesus said. Jesus never claimed to be God. Yes, he did. He didn't say, I am God, worship me, but he showed that he was God in many places in all four Gospels by doing things that only God can do. It's true that he didn't walk around before his resurrection claiming to be God because he wanted people to figure it out themselves. That's why he kept saying, who do you say that I am? The idea and argumentation that Jesus called himself God or not God is not necessarily an atheist argumentation. This right here come across as a non-Trinitarian argumentation. I don't necessarily care either way for that particular issue. The Bible supports slavery. No, it doesn't. Just because there's slavery in the Bible doesn't mean the Bible supports it. There are some Old Testament verses that could be interpreted as condoning slavery, but Jesus himself said that the Old Testament made accommodations to people's sinful state. And also, slave owners in the American South had slave Bibles for their slaves to read, but it omitted a lot of the real Bible, so if the Bible actually did support slavery, this wouldn't have been necessary. But the Bible simply does not condemn slavery whatsoever. For the book of Exodus, for the whole entire list of the Ten Commandments, not a single time did it say, Thou shalt not own any slaves in that list. According to Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 and 19, Jesus Christ actually quotes directly from the Ten Commandments, and not a single time during that quotation that he actually condemned slavery. Paul himself basically said for slaves to obey their masters. So neither in the Old Testament or the New Testament that they actually condemned slavery. Christianity supported slavery. Well, sure, some Christians did, but all human civilizations have had slavery. Christian civilization was the first one to abolish it on moral grounds. The fact that you're against slavery is due to Christian influence. I can acknowledge the fact that there are also good Christians that did in fact condemn slavery in the past. I don't want to come across as mean, but sometimes there are issues where you basically have cognitive dissonance. That is to say, you follow one set of ideas that contradict the ideas that you follow. So yes, it's possible for a Christian to condemn slavery while also following a book that does not explicitly condemn slavery. Because I don't follow any type of book whatsoever, I don't necessarily have to worry about that. The later one of the Gospels was written, the more divine it makes Jesus seem, so we can extrapolate that Jesus was originally a human figure who got made more divine over time. Alright, maybe some Gospels emphasize Jesus' divinity more than others, but what about Paul's letters that fully confess the divinity of Jesus and were also written before any of the Gospels? The thing about Paul is that he never met Jesus in person whatsoever. He allegedly met James, who was the brother of Jesus, but James himself was not necessarily there at the resurrection. Paul more or less saw Jesus during the whole entire road to Damascus. Additionally, seven different letters of Paul are considered to be forgeries too. They were done by people that claimed to be Paul, but not necessarily Paul at all. You can check out the book that was done by Bart Ehrman that's called Forge about this issue. Science disproves God. Well, actually, the church invented modern science. All the founders of the scientific revolution deeply believed in God, and medieval theologians laid the groundwork for modern science by saying the world was governed by an intelligent creator. That means we can understand the world with our intelligence. And studying God led to studying the world because the world is God's creation. While it's true that there's Christian scientists that contributed to the sciences, there's no shot of a doubt, however, that the idea of the scientific method predates Christianity itself. The ideas of the scientific method that we know today comes directly from Aristotle. I don't think it's absolutely right to say that the church invented the scientific method because there's no historical basis for that claim. There's 4,000 gods that people believe in and you're atheist to 3,999 of them. I just go one god further. 
Okay, this isn't the gotcha that you think it is, because the question of whether some sort of god exists is fundamentally different from the question of which religion is right about god. There are two things I want to say in response to that statement. For starters, most atheists who use that argumentation that they believe in one less god than you are not using that as an argumentation against the idea of the Christian god. What they're trying to do is they want to find common ground with the Christian on this particular issue. To find common ground, what they would say in that particular context is like, hey, my friend, I don't believe in the Greek gods like you. I don't believe in the Mesopotamian gods like you. I don't believe in any type of gods like you. The only difference between you and me is that I don't believe in the Christian God. Although that comment is a good common ground to find commonality between Christians and atheists, the reality is that Christians do in fact acknowledge the existence of other gods, but they consider the other gods as demons in many denominations. If God created everything, then who created God? Well, God is defined as the uncaused causer. Everyone knows there needs to be a first cause at the beginning of the chain of all events in the universe, and it makes a lot more sense for that first cause to be a personal God who caused things for a reason, rather than some random, impersonal force. It's not necessarily true that everything's a direct result of cause and effect. For example, the law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. The fact that there are vertical particles in outer space, the fact that there are flashes of light, they seem to tell us that they're not necessarily done by a cause. But even if I were to grant you that everything in life requires a cause and effect, the fact that your God does not require a cause is special pleading. Like, everything needs a cause and effect, right, but my God does not require a cause and effect. Atheist countries are more prosperous. Yes, it's true that Northern European countries are very prosperous and very secular, but correlation doesn't equal causation. It's not like atheism causes prosperity, it's that prosperity causes atheism because when people have comfortable lives, they don't feel a need to depend on God. But why are these particular countries so prosperous in the first place? They may be secular now, but they're rooted in generations and generations of Protestant Christianity. If you want an example of a country that's atheist and not rooted in Christianity, look at Communist China. I thought you said in your video that correlation does not equal causation, yet in the same breath you're saying that the success of these countries in Europe is largely because of Christianity. You also said in the video that prosperity leads to atheism, but again, what is it? You cannot necessarily say that correlation does not cause causation while saying that at the same breath. It doesn't make sense. If Christianity is true, why are there so many denominations of it? Well, yeah, there are a lot of denominations, but the things they agree on are a lot more significant than the things they disagree on. I don't think it's actually true to say that Christians do in fact believe in the essentials. The only criteria for all Christians is the fact that they follow Jesus Christ. In terms how to interpret the Bible, not a single denomination actually agree with each other. In terms of baptism, they disagree with each other. There are non-Trinitarians that disagree with Trinitarians. Some disagree if Jesus was God or not. Some allow women leaders, others don't allow women leaders. Some accept gay people, others don't. It's a mess. Can God make a rock he can't lift? Well, you're just asking if God can contradict himself, like can God lie, or can God change, or can God make another God? And the answer to all those things is no. God being all-powerful means he can do anything to things outside himself. It doesn't mean that he can do anything to himself or that he can contradict himself. But if God cannot do anything to himself, he is not necessarily all-powerful. There's no evidence for Jesus outside the Bible. Well, that's not true. There's the ancient Jewish historian Josephus who wrote about Jesus, and he's one of the reasons why even secular scholars know Jesus historically existed. That is true that we have historical records of Jesus outside the Bible. However, with a caveat, just because we have historical records of a Jesus outside the Bible, does not necessarily mean that somehow this Jesus is a magic man. Constantine invented what we now know of as Christianity. Again, read at atheist level myth, atheists can do better than that, listen to an actual scholar. That's true, largely because there were many Christians that basically predate Constantine, but it was not until Constantine that he actually made the religion official for the whole entire place. So there you go, that's my personal response to Redeem Zoomer, and honestly, I was not necessarily impressed by the whole entire answers that he gave to atheist questions. 
Christian apologetics is not necessarily good to begin with, but I can tell that this person is pretty new to Christian apologetics. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.